Hello, my beautiful AP Computer Science students. Welcome to our lesson today, which is going to be lesson four, the enhanced for loop in unit six, talking about arrays. So we're going to talk about the enhanced for loop today, um, what it is, and how we use it when working with arrays. So this is a new type of loop. Um, it's called the for each loop or the enhanced for loop, kind of used interchangeably, for each or the enhanced for loop. Um, this loop uses a modified syntax to traverse through arrays, um, and we'll also use it a lot with array lists, which we're going to talk about in the next unit as well. So this loop is just another way for us to traverse through arrays. And here's what the syntax looks like. So it still starts off with our familiar for loop header. Um, but then inside um, is inside parentheses is something different. So we start off with the type and then a variable name, um, a colon, and then the array name. Okay. So this is the name of the array that we are going to traverse through. The type is going to match the type that is in the array. So if we have an array of strings, the type is going to be a string. If we have an array of ints, the type is going to be an int. And then var, var is going to be a local variable inside the for loop. And inside the for loop, we use statements using var. So when reading this code, we say for each var in array. Okay, do this with var, meaning that var in each iteration, var is going to represent an element. So let's say, for example, I have an array of ints. I say for each int, for each integer in my array, do something with the int. So the first time through, var would be a 6. The second time through, var would be a 5. The third time through, var would be a 3. And then the fourth time through, the last time through the loop, var would be a 2. So each time the for loop runs, the variable represents the current element that you are at. Um, so that's what we have here finishing off the notes. Var will reference the current element in the array. And every time we loop, it will change um, to the next element in the array. So it allows us to traverse through um, an array without using an index. We didn't we don't have any index variable in the for each loop. It just lets us traverse beginning to the end of an array. So to remind you, this is how we print the contents of an array with a for loop, right? This is how we traverse with a for loop. We have an array ARR, um, an array of integers, and then it says for each int i equals 0, i less than r dot length, i plus plus. So that's our familiar heading. It uses i as the indice of your array. And then we reference the current element by using arr and then in brackets with that i. i changing every time, representing the index. This is what it's going to look like with the for each loop or the enhanced for loop. So we'll still have our... Um, array of integers here. Now we say for each integer n in r. Okay, So we say for each int n in arr. Okay? So again, arr, that's the name of our array that we're going to traverse through. Int, we call it an int because arr is an array of integer values. And then n is going to be our local variable in here. Okay? So each time we traverse through the first time through, n will be 2. The second time through, n will be 5. Okay? So each time we traverse, n becomes a new value. Okay? And then we have inside our for each loop um, statements using n. So if I just wanted to print off the contents, I would just use n. Because each time through, n becomes the different number from the array. Okay. So now this local variable represents the current element, whereas before we had to use the index i to represent the current element of the array. Okay. So that's our enhanced for loop. 
the for loop, remember, says do this a certain number of times, and the for loop can apply to many different scenarios, not only with arrays, but it can apply to many different scenarios that we might need to repeat a certain number of times for. The for each loop says do this with every element in the list, or every element in the array, or every element in the array list. <laughs> okay, so we do the for each is specific to arrays and array lists. So here's some practice. Okay, um, write a for each loop to accomplish um, each of these tasks here. Okay, so in an array of integers called num list, print off the odd elements. Okay, so we would start off with our loop header. Since it's an array of integers, I have int. I'm going to call this num again. This can be called anything. It's just a local variable, and then my array is called num list. So I say for each integer num in num list is how we kind of say that in um, non-coding terms for each <laughs> integer num in num list. We're going to check to see if it's odd. So now again num is our local variable that changes each time we loop to the current element. So we check to see if the current element is odd and if it is we're going to print it off. So that would be the code to using a for each loop um, to print off the odd elements. Okay. Um, a second example in an array of string called words, print off the first letter of each word. Okay. So now we have a, an array of strings. So our for each loop header looks like this. Um, string, because in our array words, we have strings. And then again, this is our local variable. So each time through, value is going to represent the, the string. And we want to print off the first letter of each word. So we're going to do, oops, I need a parenthesis here, value, since that is the, um, that is the, the variable that represents the current element, dot substring 0, 1. Okay. And that's going to print off that first letter of each word. Okay, so a couple of examples with the for each. Um, while any for each loop can be written as a for loop, the opposite is not true. Okay, anytime you write a for each loop, you can always write a for loop that does the same thing. But you can't always use a for each loop for everything. There's a lot of limitations when it comes to a for each loop. Okay. Um, for example, you cannot modify the contents of an array in a for each loop. Okay. You cannot modify the contents. And let me show you why with a little example here. So in this example, you'll see the code is correct. It runs fine. There's no runtime error, nothing like that. It just doesn't do what you might expect it to do. Okay. It will run, but the variable num in the for each loop is a local variable to the loop. It gets assigned the value of an element, but the actual element itself never gets modified. It's just that local variable num that gets modified. Okay, so in this example, I still have int arr equals 25379. Um, in my for each loop, I have int num in arr. Okay, so for the first iteration, num is going to be the first element in the list, it's going to be a 2. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to add 1 to num, and then we're going to print it off. Okay. So num is going to be 2. We add 1 to it. It becomes 3. And then we print off num. We print off a 3 because num is 3. The second time through the loop, num becomes the second element. Okay. So the first time, num was 2. Then it became 3. When we loop back around, num becomes a, a whole new value. Okay, Three is lost. Three is no longer stored in any variable. Num becomes the next element, which is going to be five. We add one to it, and then we print it off, and it becomes six. Then the third iteration, num becomes three. Add one to it, print it off, then it becomes seven then it becomes nine and add one. So the council by the end of this loop looks like this. Okay? It takes the current element, adds one, and then prints it off. But notice how nothing happened to this original array. We didn't change this array at all. Okay? We had a local variable num 
and that's what got changed and that's what got printed off. So when I come down here and I do a for each loop for each num in ARR, print off num, what's going to be printed? Well, each number in ARR, 25379. Nothing got changed because in the loop above, num was a local variable, which is why it's okay to use it here and here. It's okay to declare it twice and use it twice because it's local to the for each loop. Okay, Local to the for each loop. So we cannot modify the contents of an array using the for each loop. Okay. But we know we can modify the contents of an array. We just have to use a for loop. So here's going to be that same code. Um, just in order to modify it, we have to use a for loop. Okay. So here's that same code, that same one. Here now is a regular for loop. Okay. When I do this, when I use the actual current element with the brackets, that's how I modify content. Okay. So the first time through, this first highlighted piece of code is going to print 3, 6, 4, 8, 10 because each element had one added to it and then printed it off. Okay. So each of these got modified and then printed off. So when I go down here to this for each loop and I print off num for each num in ARR, I'm also going to print those modified contents because they've actually been changed in memory. Okay. Okay. So that's one of the limitations of the for each loop. Um, there's also a lot of limitations when it comes to array list, um, which we'll discuss specific properties when we actually get to that in unit seven. Okay. So just know we use the for each usually just to access elements. Um, if you ever needed to modify elements in the array, then we would use a regular for loop. Okay. Because the for each cannot actually modify any contents of an array. Okay. All right. And that's going to be the end of our lesson on enhanced for loops. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.